What's up, Navigating Academia family? This is your buddy, Dr. Jay Phoenix, and your personal academic mentor, coming at you to be able to answer a valued viewer's question. Uh, today's question comes from a buddy of mine named Benji. Benji, thank you so much for watching and being a subscriber. Uh, Benji sent me an email asking me this question. Benji just finished up his postdoctoral fellowship, and he's having a difficult time right now finding a tenure-track faculty position. Uh, this is something that we've discussed in other videos where essentially over three-fourths of all new positions opening up are non-tenured track faculty positions. There's other videos on the channel about uh, essentially does tenure even mean anything these days? Uh, and does tenure make you safe? I think that's the name of a video. Uh, and there's certainly other ones where I uh, talk about the pros and cons of being an adjunct professor in these things. Uh, I'm actually going to be doing an interview here uh, at, at some point within the next couple of months uh, with an adjunct professor so that they can tell you a little bit about their experience. If you don't know what an adjunct professor is, it is a non-tenure track faculty member who is kind of like a hired gun, basically. They sign up to be able to teach usually individual courses. So they can sign up and say, okay, I want to teach, you know, these courses or whatever, or I just want to teach, you know, this, this one that they'll get hired, they'll get brought on to be able to teach. And they're basically uh, paid a one-off fee to be able to teach that class. Usually they're independent contractors, although I, I do know some individuals who have different arrangements with universities, but usually they come in, they may even be listed on the faculty webpage, which a lot of people, it's one of the reasons they do it is they think it's really cool. You'll know if you watch the other videos on the channel, that I think that if you've got if you've got that itch, which is like that teaching itch, if you love to teach, if you love young people uh, and helping people along in their career, then being an adjunct professor uh, is an absolute delight. It's something you should do, but you should not do it for the money, right? And it's something that you guys know also my view on. A lot of people go to grad school like I did and said, you know, I want to be a clinician. Uh, let's just say you want to be a clinician first. I primarily want to be a clinician, but you know, I also want to publish a little bit and I'd like to do some teaching as well. This is very normal, right, for people to be able to say. It's also normal for people to say the opposite if they want to be a researcher, right? So it's like, I mostly want to be a professor, right? But, you know, I'd like to have a little private practice on the side and see some clients and then I also, you know, like want to teach, right? These are very, very common things. Uh, it's almost like if anybody plays video games, there's a game called Fallout. And a lot of games, technically, but let's just say Fallout, where at the very beginning of the game, you're given like a set number of points and you can allocate them however you want into all these different skill sets. Kind of the same thing here, except it has to do with time and expertise, right? Uh, if you've got 100% of a pizza pie, 100% of variance, you basically have to decide how much am I going to allocate to each of these three different activities. And as much as I would love to say that it's possible, it's basically impossible to be really, really expert level at all three of those and spend as much time and energy that's necessary to max out kind of your skill sets in all three of these different areas. So the question is, you know, would you rather have 70% of each one of those three in terms of being really good at them? Or would you rather have like 100% at one of them? You know, you get to choose, and this is different for everybody, right? Uh, the last thing that I would ever do is to be able to tell you 100% do something or 100% don't do it. You guys know my big view is to be able to use the evidence base on everything, keep our eyes wide open when it comes to navigating academia, hence the name of the channel, and to be able to give you guys all the facts so that you guys can make an informed decision for yourself. So like I said, before I even give you guys the data and we go through this article together, the important thing is just that you know, my belief is that if you are not currently a faculty member somewhere and you've got an itch that you want to scratch in terms of teaching and you almost want to use it as a very time-consuming hobby, right? Then being an adjunct is awesome, especially because initially you have to develop all the course materials, Anybody who's done that before for like, you know, 13 to 16 weeks of lectures, midterms, finals, essay grading, etc. You know how time intensive that is, right? After you've developed the materials, then you just have to go and, you know, deliver them in lecture format. So depending on the country that you're in, this is going to differ in terms of how many hours of, you know, teaching per week it is. But usually it's, you know, at least three-ish right? Some cases a bit more, some cases a bit less, right? But three hours of lecturing is a lot of work to be able to put materials together. And if you have that three hours a week for 13 to 16 weeks, and that's only one class, and you're teaching a 2-2, two -two, meaning two classes in the semester, two classes in the fall, sorry, two in the spring semester, two in the fall, or you're teaching a 3-3. Three -three. I had somebody on Twitter today tell me that she was teaching a 5-2-5, five -five, which is a five in the fall, a two in the summer, and a five in the... Uh, in the spring, this is insane. That's nuts, 
right? But people do it, right? And for those 10 classes, which is an insane amount of teaching, can you imagine, guys, how much work that is? Uh, you're still, or sorry, 12 classes. Uh, if you take this summer into consideration, you're not getting paid that much, right? So this is not something I recommend in terms of being an adjunct to be like a full-time adjunct professor. People do it, but it's really hard and we're going to learn why now, okay? So this is an article was published in 2020, right? It's called Barely Getting By. New report on adjuncts say that many make less than $3,500 per course and live in poverty, okay? Near, and this is from uh, InsideHigherEd.com, so this is a, a legit source, right? So, nearly 25% of adjunct faculty members rely on public assistance, and 40% struggle to cover basic household expenses, according to a new report from the American Federation of Teachers. Nearly one-third of the 3,000 adjunct professors surveyed for the report earn less than $25,000 a year. That puts them below the federal poverty guideline for a family of four. Another third of respondents makes less than $50,000, right? So in other words, two thirds of adjuncts end up making below the average household income, okay? Uh, per course pay varies from less than $2,000 a course to more than $7,000 a course. Now, I'll tell you guys, I've been doing this for almost 18 years now. I've never seen somebody get paid $7,000 a course who is not in a specialized area, teaching in business school, teaching in law school, teaching in medical school, and so forth, okay? So a, a lot of people these days, we want to talk about possibilities uh, as opposed to probabilities. Please work with probabilities and don't think that you'll be the exception to the rule. I'm not saying it specifically to you who's watching. I'm talking about the general populace, right? Uh, statistics it's not on our side that we're going to pay get paid seven grand teaching you know five classes or something like this okay so <clears throat> about 53 percent so about half of respondents make less than thirty five hundred dollars per course asked about equitable compensation more than half said that they should be paid at least five thousand dollars per course an army of temps, an increase in the per course minimum at this range would immediately benefit the mass majority of contingent faculty members. Okay, so here we go. So what is your estimated total individual income annually across all teaching and non-teaching positions? Okay, everything together. All right. So let's take a look. These two big ones here, right? So this is everything. This isn't just adjuncting. This means that this is the only money that these people are making. Okay. So for one third of people, their entire household income, they're not doing this and have other jobs. This is it, right? So they are making less than $25,000. Okay. And another 33% here, as you can see, is $25,000 to $50,000, right? So two thirds of adjunct professors, if you do nothing but teach as an adjunct you are essentially in a really bad situation here okay uh and this is why if you want to do it treat it like a hobby if you make money from it that's a blessing and if you don't make that much money from it that's not the reason you're doing it but if you're doing it and this is your only source of income and in whatever the structure is of your life of maybe you're married maybe you're in a relationship maybe you're living with parents whatever it happens to be right whatever your setup is though right now if you're the only one making any money right it is going to be extraordinarily difficult to have your own place to live be able to afford basic household expenses gas car note if you've got one student you know loan repayments which most people uh, end up having, you know, especially if you're in the States, at least, you know, trust me, my, my second doctorate, I think cost me like 500 euros or something in Germany. I'm just like, why did I pay an insane amount for my first doctorate from Oxford WTF? Right. Um, but with all these things, it's, it's not a laughing matter, right? You will be the working poor. That's what it is with a PhD, with a PhD from Harvard. If you want to go and do adjuncting and this kind of stuff, this is what you're going to get, guys, okay? So it's just an important thing to take into consideration, okay? Uh, students are not receiving the best possible education when the instructor in front of them is struggling to decide whether to buy food or medicine, and students' futures are jeopardized when an inspiring professor who could provide a recommendation or future further mentorship is let go as soon as the academic term ends, which is true. There's a lot of turnover, as they call it. 
Uh, to secure the economic and social prosperity and justice that our members, our students, and our nation deserves, we must address the problems afflicting higher education. And there is a lot of those. All right, guys, so that's what I've got for you today. It's important always that I try to be able to make these videos for you guys to educate you on the, on the facts and figures of these things, financially speaking. Those of you who work with me one-on-one, -on -one, and if you guys are ever interested in booking a one-on-one -on -one session with me, take a look at the description box below, which is www.jphoenixing.com. You can book a session with me there. If you're trying to figure out how the hell am I going to actually financially make all this make sense, with my student loan debt, with my budget, maybe you don't even know how to set up a budget, I can help you with that, right? If you don't know much about investing, I can teach about investing. Uh, this is from a guy who is certainly not a CPA or anything like that, certainly not a wealth management advisor, but was a guy in academia who didn't know what he was doing financially and then got very, very good and very, very effective at it, right? And the results speak for themselves financially. So if it's something you ever want to talk about, please do let me know. I'm more than happy to do that. If you have other questions that you want to ask about adjuncting, please put them down in the comments below, okay? Uh, and I'll try to get those answers for you from colleagues of mine who do adjuncting full-time, okay? Now, just to let you know, my colleagues who do adjuncting full-time, all of them but one, are married to spouses where the spouse is the primary breadwinner, right? And the reason that these friends of mine enjoy doing the adjuncting is because it provides flexible hours for them to be able to pursue non-financial passions or to be able uh, to do things like one of them, for example, uh, his father is very, very sick. And so the rest of the time he just spends taking care of his father. Uh, another one has a young child. And so because of that, you know, she takes care of the young child. Uh, people have different reasons why they need the flexibility, right? And it's, it's an amazing opportunity to have that flexibility in academia. Um, so at the end of the day, guys, uh, it's just something where keeping your eyes wide open is the most important thing. All right. All right, guys, God bless you. Thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.